You know, people have this notion that when you bring action to intention, you get success. And that's actually a complete lie. If you're bringing misinformed action to intention, it's like taking a wrecking ball to your life. Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. Welcome to the podcast. Today we have a guest who's been on before. I'm a big fan of hers. Her name is Jillian Michaels. Jillian's here with us and she is Americans, uh, America's health and wellness guru. She brings, uh, actually, she also has her own podcast that I'm going to be on called the Jillian Michaels show. And, and I'll just say this, like from the, uh, you know, there's so many things I love about Jillian, my wife, Chelsea and I, we started watching the biggest loser years ago. And first off, like we just, you know, Jillian, like we loved your personality. We love that you're intense and passionate, but also you care for people, you know? So I think we really resonated with your passion and your commitment and, you know, all the great characteristics that make up you. So excited to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you. You know, it's mutual. <laughs> I was like, do I even need to say <laughs> it's mutual? You know, I'm a massive fan of everything that you do and have been for years. So I'm Thanks excited so to see you on. Cool. Well, we're going to talk about a lot today. I want to talk, we're going to talk a lot about fitness. We're going to talk about stoking up your metabolism. We're going to talk about mindset because this is such a big deal. And actually, I want to also talk about your coffee. We want to talk about fitness today using apps because, and, and, and nutrition using apps, because, you know, we're in a world today where I think technology for some people can be the greatest thing that gets them off track. But for some people, technology really can help give them an edge in getting fit and everything else. So anyways, we're going to talk about that and a lot more today and uh, excited to dive in. So perfect. I'm ready. I'm just adjusting my screen and rolling up my sleeves. <laughs> our one thing I'd love to hear from you before we get into some of the fitness and nutrition stuff, I want to talk to you about goal setting. One of the yeah. things that, you know, I think that I've read in a book of yours in the past and seen you reference is sort of like staying motivated, setting goals, achieving those goals. Talk to me about how you go about with yourself and the mm -hmm. clients you've worked with over the years you know, setting goals and achieving those goals and having the right mindset in that as well. The, the first thing is that the individual has to be passionate about the goal, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, I, I tell this joke all the time about how when contestants would first come to Biggest Loser, you know, they would, they would get up on the scale and give this whole speech about how they were going to get healthy and save themselves and the world and their community and all this stuff. And then five minutes into the workout, you know, they're crying and rolling <laughs> on the floor, crawling for the door, throwing up. And it's like, you know, they're trying to leave. And I was like, what did you originally come here for? Because that was a great speech. But like, what did you think was going to happen? You thought I was going to like sprinkle some trainer dust and you just shrink right yeah. up? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> Cholesterol numbers fixed. Like, what did you think was going to happen? And, you know, they would all kind of give me like their best Scooby-Doo. It's like, you know, no idea. And I would say, why did you come here? And then they would all give me the little, I want to be healthy. And then you say, all right, well, what does that mean? And I got like the next Scooby-Doo, you know, or it's like, they had no idea. So the first thing is really defining what that looks like in your life. And this goes the same for any goal. You know, people tend to say, well, I want love. I want money. I want health. Well, Again, look at money. It's like, do you want to be a Fortune 500 CEO or do you want a part-time job doing what you love in a family-run business? Like, it's very important you define what it means to you. So it could be as simple as I'm a 20-year-old and I want to wear a two-piece instead of a one-piece at spring break. And it could be as profound as I lost my parents to cancer. I swear that I will, you know, fight against this and live my healthiest life and, you know, compete in events to raise money for cancer. I want to be my children's role model. I want to live to be a hundred. I, I want to be more comfortable having sex with the lights on. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't care how superficial and I don't care how profound. It's very important that we start to get people in touch with the things they really want. And then the work and the sacrifice that's associated with achieving any goal becomes passion because it has purpose. So work with a purpose becomes passion. It's tolerable. Work without it just feels punishing and life is punishing enough. So that's the first part is helping them define something very clearly and outline it, making sure they're passionate about it. And then you can break down like, okay, what's realistic? You know, what's a time frame that makes sense? And you can sort of take that bigger goal and I call it like a goal pyramid 
You put it at the top and say, I'm going to lose 50 pounds in a year. Great. What does that look like in a month? You know, oh, I got to lose, I got to lose four pounds a month. Great. That's a pound a week. Great. And you break it down so that those long-term goals become monthly, weekly, daily, and you give them a roadmap. So now you have purpose and passion, a clear defined destination and a bite-sized plan with the right information so that they're not overwhelmed and every step they take every day will get them closer to that long-term goal. Sorry, that was a very long answer. (laughs) No, it makes total sense. I mean, one of the things I love, Jillian, is that kind of one of the big points here is, is that it's sort of not like a, hey, you go from here and there's an end destination and there's no mile markers. You know, that's one of the things I love about, I think, important. I know, you know, I've over the years, and I'm sure you have to, you know, ran maybe like 5Ks or races or something like that. And there's something about, okay, I'm at the, I see the mile marker. You go fast, you go harder. I mean, how much do you see that in the people you work with? Oh my gosh, I see it all the time where they're like, okay, I, you know, they'll report in or they'll track their progress. And it's like, I hit this benchmark. I completed this week of workouts. I lost a pound this week or five pounds this month, but giving people these, I I hate to say bite-sized goals, but there's a reason they say small successes beget bigger successes because A, it builds momentum. It builds your belief in your ability. It helps keep you motivated because you're seeing results and it's not overwhelming people. Yeah. You know, it's like when you say 50 pounds, they're like, oh my God, I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to start. Or they get overwhelmed when they go to the doctor and they get bad news about their health. And how do I fix this? How do I reverse this? What do I do about this? And then they just sweep it under the rug. And that's why I love what you do so much because you explain it in a way that isn't scary. You give them an action plan that everyone can manage. And that information, right, is what we need to take the fear away and then make these small right choices that yield powerful results, which add up over time. I love it. It's so good. So I want to just encourage everybody. I mean, you know, any time of year is a good time of year to set goals and also those mile markers along the way, celebrate those mile markers in a healthy way. And um, anyways, and we're, we're going to talk about that here too in a little bit. I want to ask you, I'm going to switch gears really quick. And we're going to jump back to more nutrition stuff. I saw mm-hmm. a post you did. And what's interesting is I was, I was asked this exact same question in one of my last interviews. And the question was essentially, there was a magazine. I'm not remember the magazine, but right. somebody was on the cover and essentially said, this is healthy. And the person was based on, you know, if we're going off of body fat, it was, it was way over the amount of body fat somebody should have. I saw, first off, I always love and appreciate how you're like, how you address controversy head on and you're not going to back down and you're not going to, cause we live in a world today. It's kind of crazy. Not to, I'm just going to go on a 30 second tangent where people are canceled because they say one wrong thing in their life versus, you know, I've always found that You know, I I tell my team this, if you're a leader, which Jillian, you are, it's like, we need to have a combination of loving people, but challenging people to get better, you know? So anyways, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? If somebody's putting on a magazine covering, telling people this is healthy when somebody is on average a hundred pounds or overweight based off of, in terms of all of this extra body fat. I know. Um, here's where it, first of all, when it comes to cancel culture, I understand how scary it is. And it, I think it's less scary for you and I because you and I have our own platform. Yeah. So, you know, I've been, quote, canceled a million times over the past two decades and I'm still standing because I have an app. I can't be fired from my own app. You know, yeah. you have your books and your podcasts and your supplements and no one can fire you from your own companies. But I have watched regular everyday people and I, I don't mean to say, I say every day, not in a, in a way like I'm so special. I mean that I have my own platform where no one can fire me, right? I don't yeah. want to be like, I'm not an everyday person. It's a person that has a job somewhere, say one wrong thing and they're fired and they're banished and, or yeah. God forbid, you don't say one wrong thing. You just don't believe what someone else believes. Yeah. You know, then it's like, we're taking your name and we're putting you on a list and it's just absolutely disgusting. Um, across the board, I... I I, it horrifies me um, that we cannot tolerate differences of opinion. And then we attack the truth because we don't like it. Yeah. And this is where I think where we can make a stand is when we're experts in something, 
know, I'm not a political expert. I'm not here to give anybody my opinion. I'm not an economist. I'm not a, a medical doctor. You know, I don't make comments about like what you should do to protect yourself from COVID. I don't make, <laughs> you know, common sense. It's like, sure. I mean, I, I, you know, be careful, wear a mask, whatever, but I'm not here to preach about it. Um, I am an expert in, in fitness and I, I am a certified nutritionist and I have been doing this since I was 17. I, uh, I have multiple certifications. I've written multiple best-selling books with experts in the field across, you know, endocrinology. I mean, you name it. And you but- help people get extraordinary results, which I want to just say is probably the number one thing. Like when people look at your track record of, Hey, look at the people you've helped get healthy, lose all the things. I think you know, uh, you're not going to say what you're saying, but that's big. That's what I'm saying. Like, like yeah, I know incredible. what I'm talking about here. So I feel like you can challenge me all day long. I am an expert and I can overwhelm you with empirical data. And that's where I feel safe making a stand. So people can call me whatever they want to call me, which is ironic. And, oh, you're fat phobic and you're this and you're that. And you're thinking to yourself, like, fat phobic? Like, number one, I was an overweight kid. Number two, I've dedicated my life to helping people work through these issues because I do know the pain they're in because I was there. I do know how valuable they are. And the fact that you're looking at a human being saying, look, you're a mom, you're a dad, you're a wife, you're a husband, you're a daughter, you're a son, you're a sister, you're a brother. People love you in this world and don't want to lose you. 20, 30, 40 years earlier than they should have to. Yeah. And the fact that you cannot call out like, hey, this will kill you. That just is, I won't, I refuse. It doesn't mean you're not beautiful. It doesn't mean you're not valuable. It doesn't mean you're not smart or funny or deserving. In fact, you know, look, that's all in the eye of the beholder. But in fact, it is saying you are so valuable. We want you around for years to come. That's right. The exact opposite, but lying to people is not helping them. And I, I mean, it's, I remember the, the Lizzo conversation and I didn't even bring up Lizzo. I was asked if I celebrated her weight and I was like, wait a second. I celebrate her as an artist, which is how we should be celebrating everybody. Their yeah. weight is not, and I was very clear. I was like, it's none of my business. And by the way, she could be a size six and it would be none of my business. I wouldn't celebrate that. I don't care. I care about her as an artist. If she came to me as a client, well then yes, now I'm invested in it. But if you're asking me if I celebrate obesity, no, because it kills people. Yeah. So what's exactly. the lie? <laughs> Is the lie yep. that it doesn't kill people? Or like, that's what I'm just trying to grasp. So, you know, if wanting someone to be healthy is about va- is the exact opposite. It's about valuing them and wanting them to be around for years to come. It's not <laughs> fat phobic. Fat phobic is when you lie and pretend like it's not actually a problem because you're uncomfortable with it. Yeah, and w- one of the things too I, I see happening a lot, and first off, I'm completely with you. The way I answered it was very similar to you in that, listen, I'm just here looking at the research. You know what it shows? It shows if you are obese, it takes years off your life, it increases your risk of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, you name it, all of them. And we want people to live healthier, longer lives. And so uh, I'm, I'm completely with you. I love, I think it's such a, it's a, such a fantastic mindset and answer. The other thing is there's a great quote I read. This is years ago. And it said the opposite of, uh, courage is not cowardice. It's conformity. And that's the thing is, you know, so, so many people today, it's like, well, if they said it, that's true. Or, or like, if it's the majority of the population believes that I'm just going to believe that. And that's safe. So I don't get, you know, so yes. anyways, the thing I love is like for you, like, you know, you have such a spirit of courage and also confronting these things, speaking truth. And, you know, it's important for the world to hear. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, you. I feel the exact same about what you do and how you handle it. I mean, and you always handle it with poise and grace and it's just, but it, we're not doing anybody any favors by lying to them because yeah. it's politically correct. I'm with it's you. It's such a, ugh, makes me so sad. Yeah. Same here. Well, you know, the good news is that, you know, we're helping people. And I think also there's a degree, people are kind of getting sick of the, some people, quite a few are kind of sick now of the cancel culture because it's gotten to be so overboard. And I start, I think we're starting to see somewhat an improvement there. All that being said, I think the other thing too is, I think eventually truth prevails. You know, I think that, you know, when I'm looking at what you're teaching and like when you're making that comment, it's not other people are coming in and also saying, hey, you know what? This is, uh, you know, Jillian's right here. 
All right. So let's talk about this a little bit. So obviously there's a lot of different forms of fitness. And I know if somebody's health goal is to number one, get healthy. Okay. Let's talk about that. Then I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on, Hey, this is the best exercise for burning fat. This is the best for maybe other things as we, anything else you want to talk about. So, so let's talk. So we got weight training. We've got uh, high intensity interval training. We got cardio, we got yoga, we've got lots of other things. Like mm-hmm. if somebody, you know, let's say if somebody just has 30 minutes, three days a week, right. what do you typically recommend that looks like for, you know, for, 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 for those varying types of fitness? Okay. So here's the one caveat is that the most effective fitness is the one you're going to show up for. That's good. Yeah. Because if you, you know, I can easily rattle off what I'm about to and tell you all the most effective techniques. But if you think I would rather stick needles in my eyes, than do that, (laughs) then do that with you, Jill, then it's, it's not going to work. So if you will show up for the, you know, Pilates workout, not that there's anything wrong with Pilates, but I'm saying if you love it or a hip hop workout, you know, what you love, you'll show up for. That's the most important rule of fitness is going to be consistency. Then we can start to look at intensity and variety and active recovery. And those three things really should go together to be the most effective. So if someone gave me three 30 minute sessions a week, I would have them split the workout up as follows. So one of those days I would do push muscles, which is chest, shoulders, triceps, quadriceps, and I would do it in a circuit training fashion, which means we don't rest during that 30 minutes. So I don't want to get too technical, but if you've ever done one of my workouts, you'll notice that I will go, let's say push-ups into squats. So it's, I'm resting now my upper body while my lower body's working, but my body is not resting. So I'm using every second of that time to be the most efficient and it's challenging my cardiovascular system because I'm, I'm not allowing my body to rest and recover. So it burns more calories. It's a good conditioning workout for your cardiovascular system. You're also training the muscles. And then as a person gets a bit more fit, I'll work in a high intensity interval. So maybe it's okay. Push-ups. Okay. Squats. Okay. 10 burpees, or it could be 10 jumping jacks, something to get that heart rate up and then repeat it. So circuit training with high intensity intervals, no resting. Then the second workout would be pull muscles. So now I'm incorporating recovery for the muscles I just trained, but I'm still able to train. So I would do back, biceps, hamstrings, glutes, get a little crossover work and so do abs, but the world won't end. And meaning like it's okay if you hit them, you know, back to back because we're not going crazy, stressing them out. I would do that, let's say Wednesday, And then I would probably do a total body workout on Saturday where I've now hit both muscle groups twice in that week and I've given them adequate recovery. And I would use all the same techniques of resistance training done in a circuit fashion where there's no rest between exercises. I would work those little high intensity cardio intervals in, whether it's jumping jacks, high knees, butt kick, jump rope. And I would make sure, if at all possible, that on the days I'm not training, I've got that low intensity cardio just because it's active recovery. It helps the body recover. It burns extra calories. It keeps you active. It's the least efficient technique if you're only giving me three days, period. Then I'd be like, all right, we're not going to mess with it. Um, But foam rolling, stretching, all of that stuff would be great on your off days. Yeah, so good. Yeah, I'm with you. Actually, I read a study, this wasn't too long ago, that really showed that combination that you're talking about, the boot camp style, but it's kind of this weights plus high high intensity interval training that was the most effective thing for transforming your body. So anyways, I think that's, I think it's fantastic. One of the things I want to encourage everybody with, and then Jillian, I want you to talk about this for a second, but it's, I want to encourage you guys to check out Jillian's app. It is awesome. Just so you know, years ago, uh, Chelsea and I used to, um, and uh, we need to download the app. Actually, we'll do that right after this. But you know, we've watched your fit. We've watched your fitness DVDs. But we, we we've had your app and gone through your workouts. And so, actually, even when Chelsea and I first got married, we would uh, we would do your your fitness routines, like more like a Tabata style sort yeah. of uh, you know fitness program, a lot of body weight stuff. But anyways, I'm a huge fan of Jillian's app. I want to encourage you guys go check it out. Um, and Jillian can tell you. I think I think it's just called Jillian Michaels Fitness App. 
You can go to iTunes or uh, the Apple store, you know, where you download apps and you can download this. But the thing I love about it is it is a variety of programs, loads of routines. It's really for all people of all fitness levels. So if you're just, you know, going from couch potato to, you know, working out, hey, it's for you. Or if you're really more advanced, hey, it's for you as well. And the app includes, I just want to say a seven minute daily workout. So listen, you don't need an hour a day seven minutes, a few days a week, even that you can start to see results with. And also, you know, it's great for your mind. And also it's even great for your immune system. Working out is so important and Jillian makes it easy. You can do it from your own phone. So I want to encourage you guys go right now, check out Jillian's app. Jillian, can you just give us you know, just yeah. a brief overview of your app? Well, the seven minutes a day are free. So cool. the, the idea here is like, look, we're trying to, you know, <laughs> what is it going to take to get you to show up to build the habit and not overwhelm you with the least barriers to entry? So seven minutes a day, any place, anytime, anywhere, totally free. And you download it. You can just do that. People do. Fantastic. Obviously, yeah, we hope you'll sign up for a membership. And I say we because there's an entire team behind this thing. And there's a host of other experts that have contributed, yourself included. You That's wrote right. the, the keto reset meal plan for me. Yep. Um, so we have hundreds of recipes, first of all. And the recipes are all created by people like yourself, registered dietitians, or medical professionals. And then the individual can go in and say, well, my goal is weight loss. My goal is maintenance. My goal is muscle gain. And I am a vegan or I want keto. I want to cook for 10 or I want to cook for one. You can ban ingredients. It's all customizable wow. based on what you like and what your goals are, quite honestly. And then the fitness is the exact same. It has every DVD I ever created in there in the event that someone wants wants those, right? Because it can stream to your TV or work off your tablet or work off your phone. And we also have audio workouts only. So for example, if you wanted to get outside and go for an active recovery run, I can take you through an active recovery run, a sprint ladder, a pyramid run, and you're just listening. So you can get outside and get a great workout and never need to look at your phone. But we also have completely customizable workout programs. So again, you show up and you say, hey, this is my fitness level. This is my fitness goal. And these are the things I like. So whether it's yoga or kickboxing or prenatal fitness or weight loss or just toning up or running a 5K, it's all, all in there. And then we just added meditations and we have a guy named Jim Donovan, who's a sleep expert, and we're going to add a bunch of stuff from him in there as well to help people sleep better. But that's coming in uh, about the end of February. So it's, it's, you know, it's exciting. We're expanding it. And the whole idea is it's a one-stop shop, right, for food, fitness, mindfulness, and self-care. One platform. You don't need 20 apps. And it's totally customizable. I love it. I want to mention again, yeah, if you go on there again, that's one of the greatest things is when you're able to customize what meets your needs today. And so you're able to go on there and again, choose the type of fitness you want to follow. You're able to choose meal plans. Again, I helped with some of these yeah, meal plans and yeah, on I there. Can tell you some you recipes. Help me with this. Yeah, you're that's, the I remember, yeah that's right. I with it. I like, that's I'm right. Like, so we got I great recipe that. ideas. Yeah. You're the only one I like literally went to and I was like, I cannot incorporate this meal plan unless you do it. I Thanks did. so much. <laughs> that was great. So I encourage you guys just check that out. The, uh, Jillian, if you just look up Jillian Michaels on the app store, it's going to come right up first thing there. Encourage you guys to check it out. And again, free, free, uh, free seven workouts or seven minute workouts, plus all the other stuff you can get to by signing up for the membership. Jillian, I want, I want you to talk to us about what your life looks like in terms of fitness and nutrition. What, what, you know, again, yeah, what does your workouts look like? What do you eat typically for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? What supplements to take? We want to hear about what you yeah. do. I mean, I would say with everything other than the supplement regimen, I'm very balanced and common sense. The supplement regimen, I'm, I'm like out there. Like I, and you know this, I take a million things. Um, we'll get to that in a minute, but when it comes to fitness, fitness maintenance is much easier than trying to lose weight. It just is. And so the way I would try to liken it to somebody is imagine you have $80,000 worth of student loan debt. That's like trying to lose excess body weight, right? You've got to eat less and move more because you're trying to pay off this debt, which essentially is like burn through all this stored energy. Whereas 
maintenance mode is very much like balancing a checkbook. It's like, I made $2,000. I can spend $2,000. It's like, I, my body's burning 2000 calories. I can eat 2000 calories because I'm in maintenance mode. Whereas if I'm trying to lose weight, I burn 2000 calories, but I can't eat 2000 calories because I'm trying to dig into that fat storage. So for me, I train four times a week, about 30 minutes a session. And I train the, the way we describe for the most part, like I, I will get outside and I do that, but it's more for fun on bonus days. So I do 30 minutes of strength training with hit intervals in a, in these metabolic circuits. I just, just do. I mean, and I, I love the yoga class. I love the spin class, but unfortunately for me, I don't have a ton of time and I'm about business. Yep. So what works for me is like the best results in the shortest amount of time. So I'm like jump roping to warm up and then I'm doing body weights and free weights, all the ways we described four times a week, 30 minutes. Then uh, with my food, I'm pretty common sense. That's like, I, I don't yeah. eat more than I burn in a day. I, so I am mindful of how much I eat. That's important. And anyone who tells you it isn't is lying to you. And I use common sense. I, I eat all three of my macros in their most whole form. So yeah. whole grains, I mean, clean protein. So not like the packaged garbage lunch meat that's like filled with chemicals and preservatives and hormones and antibiotics and all kinds of junk, like a chicken breast, yeah, wild caught salmon, grass fed burger, like clean, clean meat. So when it comes to my meat and my dairy, I do invest in organics there. I know that that's tough for people or, you know, cause they cost so much more, but I would say, you don't need that much meat, eat less of it and go better quality. Um, I mean, I do all the carbs, all the proteins, all the fats. I just avoid all the chemicals and the fake colors and the fake flavors and all the junk. I, I, I don't eat fake food. And from there I have breakfast three to four hours later, snack three to four hours later, lunch three to four hours later, dinner. And I try to create a 12 to 14 hour window overnight where I don't eat for health benefits. I mean, and, and that's it. it. It's just, it doesn't, all the rest of it is just totally unnecessary. And in some cases, counterintuitive. It's it, honestly, it's just the way I eat. I mean, it's the same thing. I eat three meals a day typically, and they're all three or four hours apart. And it's wild organic meat, it's veggies. And then it's either if morning, it might be fruit or a grain and then dinner, maybe some healthy fat like avocado or co so. And, and it's, it's simple. And so anyways, I think, I think that's one of the things that's happened today too, is it's people have made it with all of these different diets overcomplicated rather than, Hey, eat real food. Don't overeat. And yeah, that's it. There you go. It's just that's common hard. sense. And yeah. the, the, but then the problem is they don't understand the math if they're trying to lose weight. So yeah. they're like, well, I'm eating healthy. And when you try to explain to them that you, know, you got to look at calories in calories out, food quality is great, but at the end of the day, that all, you got you to manage how much you're eating. They get confused. So even if they're doing great, right? Let's, let's, just, let's just do the simple math. I'm eating, I'm Jillian Michaels. I am not working out. And my base metabolic rate, because I'm small, is like, I think it's like 1,300 calories a day. And then I'm somewhat active over the course of my day. Again, not, not including fitness. And maybe I'm burning 1,600 calories a day, maybe on the days I don't work out. So now if I'm eating 1,400 down from 3,000, right? That's a huge change or 2,000, yep. 2,500. I'm like, oh my God, I'm starving myself. I'm being so like strict and diligent. I'm having like chicken breast and broccoli for dinner. Well, if I'm eating 1,400 and I'm burning 1,600, I'm only creating a 200 calorie a day deficit. If a pound roughly is 35, 3,600 calories that you've got to burn through, at that rate, you're looking at about 18 days to lose a pound. Yeah. So people are like, this isn't working. It doesn't mm -hmm. work. Calorie counting is a lie. And it's like, wait, you're not gaining anymore. You've totally forgot that part of it. Yep. And you know, the car is going in reverse just very slowly. So how do we accelerate that process? That's where you've got to exercise. That's why exercise oh, is so important for weight loss because it takes that 1600 calorie a day burn to 2100. Yeah. And now you've got 700 calories you're burning in a day. And at that rate, you're going to lose a pound a week. 
Yeah. So that's that's where it's just trying to help people understand the math behind it, and because they get discouraged and they don't get it. So that's that's kind of how it breaks down. If anybody is confused, that's so good. I want to mention this too. I just thought about this with your app. One other thing you mentioned sleep. Oh, sleep is yeah. a big deal, and I just want to say for everybody listening, uh, that's a great reason to go through this app and learn all this stuff because. You know, when you look at the studies, if somebody's getting less than seven hours of sleep a night, no. their risk of getting a cold, a flu, uh, you know, any medical condition, cancer, you can, th- all of them you can think of goes everything <laughs> up if you're not getting that much sleep. So even learning from the sleep expert part of your app, I love that. Well, the last question I have for you, Jillian, is this. So I know, I mean, again, you, you have been in this industry for a long time, helping people achieve extraordinary goals. For yourself and the people you've worked with, what, what, what is your number one tip? Or, hey, you could have two or three, it's fine. But what, what are your top tips for success if people want to see? Uh, and listen, some of this can be mindset. It's welcome to be that. But what are your top tips? Because here's the other thing I love about you is that you are so. Ju- when I've watched you help clients see these great results, whether it's on TV or anything like that, but you're the same way in person. When I've watched you even operate just at your house or just seen side conversations, when you're working, operating in your business, you're hungry, you're passionate, you're coaching people. Like, so all that being said, like you're wired like that. My, my question is this, what are some of your top tips for people just to see success? And this can be in fitness. It can yeah. be in life, business, all those things. The first one is education. And what I mean by that is, is that any goal you wish to achieve, you know, people have this notion that when you bring action to intention, you get success. And that's actually a complete lie. If you're bringing misinformed action Mm. to intention, it's like taking a wrecking ball to your life. It's like, Think about it. You open a business, but you didn't do the homework on what the rent would cost and the workers comp and the regular payroll and all the insurance and this, that, the other. You you didn't do the homework on that. You weren't prepared. You didn't have all the right pieces in place. There's a good shot. You're going to go out of business and then be farther behind the eight ball than you were when you started. You know, and, and, and the same is true of of health and wellness. If you, let's say, engaged in some crazy fad diet and let someone shoot you full of hormones exogenously, right? Where you're, they're, they're putting them in you from the outside. You're not making them endogenously from the inside where your body can regulate it and all of that. It can screw up your metabolism. They put you on f- things like the HCG diet where you're eating 500 yeah. calories a day, yep. destroying lean body mass because your body thinks it's starving. Like, these things are so dangerous and it puts you again, farther behind the eight ball than where you began. So not only is it possible, it will be completely ineffective, but it can do a heck of a lot more harm. So having the right information before you begin anything is critical because now you're mitigating that risk where you're saying, all right, I'm going to go after this. I've done all my homework. I've prepared myself. You go after it. If there's a failure or a setback, it's a smaller setback that will allow you to then readjust, analyze, tweak a few things, and reapproach again a little more intelligently. And from there, patience and perseverance will get you to the end goal, right? I, I often say success in large part is a matter of attrition. It's like who didn't quit along the way? However, you will allow yourself to get knocked down too hard and it'll be almost impossible to get back up. And that's why number one is get informed before you take any steps. I think it's so good. I mean, I, I just think, I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic advice. And so knowing and re- being able to recognize truth, yeah. I mean, it's so important in the world today. And then being and then knowing, I think about this, if your goal is to go out there and run a great, run a marathon, but somebody told you weightlifting is going to help you with that and you're doing heavy weightlifting, it won't versus other things. So anyways, it's just, you got to know what truth is. You got to have the right plan. I love that. I want to encourage you guys again with this. Check out Jillian's app. The thing I love about it, it's a one-stop shop for you having a nutrition plan, which I helped come up with some of the nutrition plans on there. (laughs) 
uh, fitness plan, anything from seven minute to 20 minute. You can do interval, you can do body weight, you can do all this different stuff. I want to encourage you guys to check it out. And the seven minutes are free. Just, just search Jillian Michaels in the app store. I want to encourage you guys to check it out. Chelsea and I are on there and we've been following Jillian for really since we've been married, doing her fitness workouts. We used to do boot camps at home uh, to your fitness routines, Jillian. So anyways, we love it. Thanks for keeping us fit in the Axe household. And we'll say, hey, thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. I've had a blast. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for listening to another show. And uh, thanks to again to Jillian Michaels, the ultimate fitness guru for being on today. Thanks, everybody. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.